Today we're talking all about super cubes. Hi everyone and welcome. I'm Tammy, the creator of the blog and this YouTube channel called Nutmeg Notebook. And this is where I share with you all about my whole food plant-based lifestyle, as well as wonderful kitchen tips that everyone can use. Today, I'm happy to share with you all about super cubes. What are they? How do you use them? Questions and answers. I've got it for you. So my husband Tom and I were on the vegan cruise holistic holiday at sea last year, about this time when sisters Madeline and Jamie Green stood up during after our um, cooking demonstration and they said, you guys have to find super cubes because you cook ahead and they would be perfect for your batch cooking. And boy, were they right. So Madeline and Jamie, thank you so much. We love our super cubes. So what are they? So the creators of super cubes are a couple named Jake and Michelle, and they created them in order to solve their own problem they had of how to properly freeze and portion out the extra soup, stew, chili, and broth that they found themselves making. And Jake, being an engineer, decided to take this on, and we are so glad that he did. So Super Cubes makes batch cooking and freezing meals ahead easy, convenient, and fun. That ends up taking up a lot less space in your freezer and allows you to be super organized, which I really enjoy. So both the trays and the lids are dishwasher safe, and every Super Cubes tray comes with its own lid. Now the um, lids are made out of polypropylene that is uh, plastic that is BPA free and the trays are made out of 100% food grade silicone and they are also BPA free. So the um, trays are safe to use in the oven up to 415, that's 415, 415 degrees Fahrenheit. The lids, however, are not oven safe, so don't put these in there. Now, they come in a variety of sizes. This really cute confetti purple one that I have here is a cookie dough one. And so you can make up your chocolate chip cookie dough, your oatmeal, peanut butter, whatever you have, and use your little uh, cookie scoop and put the dough in here and then freeze them. When they're done freezing, pop them out and put them in a gallon size freezer bag and then you can bake up fresh cookies whenever you want. And I'll show you how I also use these to freeze like lemon juice, lime juice, leftover apple juice, pineapple juice, um, etc. Things of that nature. Then the next one up from that, these are little one ounce cubes and you can freeze either one tablespoon or two tablespoons. I like how they have a line in them for us so we know how high up we can fill it and leave room for the expansion that's going to happen once the food in there um, freezes. And so these are great for so many different things. Also, you can do the juice, which I do. I have a lemon tree, so you know, usually I'll have 40 or 50 lemons that come ripe all at the same time. And this is a great way to freeze the juice. If you make your own pesto or any kind of little sauces, you can put those in here. Great for baby food if you have babies, toddlers, so that you can freeze things in small portions. Once they're frozen, pop them out and put them in your freezer bags and make sure that you label them. So the next size up from that is one half cup. And this is what this, it looks like. Now I like to use this to freeze grains. So like rice, millet, wild rice, um, oat groats. I like to cook up a big batch of those, divide them up into these containers and freeze them. When they're frozen, I pop them out and I put them in a freezer bag. And that allows me to pull out just enough, just what I want. If I'm really hungry, I can get two of them. Or if my husband and I both want them, two to three of them and otherwise, um, you know, it's really hard to portion out something from a big brick of frozen grains. And so this works out great because we have individual servings. And then the one cup, the one cup also has a half cup line in it too. So you can use it for either a half cup or a full cup. And again, marinara sauce, um, Alfredo sauce, uh, 
taco lentil filling, soup, stew, chili, whatever you make, your beans. If you make your own homemade beans, uh, put them in here and freeze them. And then you can pop them out and you have easy servings at your fingertips. And I'm gonna show you exactly how easy it is too. I have my cooler here. And inside my cooler, I have some things that I pulled from the freezer so that I could show you. So this is a curry ginger soup that I made. And I'm gonna show you how easy it is to pop these out. So what you want to do is once you fill them with the food that you want to freeze, before you put the lid on, I just let things sit on my countertop so that it can cool down because if I put the lid on too soon, it's gonna create a lot of condensation and then I'm gonna get a lot of ice frozen on top. Also, I always label, I think I'm gonna remember what is in each one, but oftentimes, you know, I might have two soups that look very similar once they're frozen. So I have these little labels. I will link to these labels for you as well. They're great because they dissolve with water. And then I just use a permanent magic marker to write on it what it is and the date that I froze it. So if you want to, you could leave the item that you're freezing in the cubes until you go to use them. But I don't do that. I pop them out and put them in a freezer bag so that I can reuse the cube because I make a lot of food ahead of time because I really like to batch cook. So once you set this out, and this was a curry ginger butternut squash soup um, that we really love and we eat year round. So you just let it sit out from the freezer for a couple of minutes and that will give it just enough thaw time that you can easily pull it out. And I'm gonna need my cameraman to give me a plastic bag, a gallon size bag. And so all you have to do then is you're just gonna push on the bottom of it with your thumbs and voila, thank you cameraman. And they pop right out, here it is. And then I just use gallon size freezer bags. These are BPA free and you can wash them and reuse them multiple times. If you don't wanna use the plastic bags, if you have some um, plastic freezer containers, you can use those. The nice thing about the gallon size bags is that Jake and Michelle made the super cube size so that once these items were frozen, they would fit four perfectly in the gallon size bag. I mean, they have thought of everything, you guys. So see how easy it is to pop these out, so much easier than ice cube trays. And you can actually fit four of them in here. And when you close them up, you just wanna make sure you get all of the air out of them and then label them. And if I'm successful, I usually just peel the label off of the super cubes lid and attach it to my plastic. But you can write right on here um, with your marker as well. And then I just want to show you some of the other things that I freeze. So here's the little round cubes that I froze in the little cookie mold. And that just works out perfect. And I, you know, like I said, I had like 48, I think, lemons that um, got ripe all at one time. And so I really needed to use all my super cubes in order to freeze everything. And then this is the square ones that I made in the little one ounce containers. And because they, they froze really quickly, I was able to do more than one tray in a day, which was really nice. Okay, so here is shepherd's pie. Now, when I was making shepherd's pie, I doubled the recipe, one for us to have that day, and then I, the double one, then I went ahead and made them up in the two cup super cubes. And I, you, I could have baked if I wanted to in these. These are safe to go in the oven up to 415 degrees. But instead I thought, well, I'll just wait until I go to heat them up because basically since this is a vegan shepherd's pie, everything that was in it was already cooked. But you can see they fit down perfectly in there. Once they were frozen, then all I had to do was pop them out and put them in my freezer bag. And now I have wonderful, individual lentil shepherd's pie. 
and this recipe is on the blog and also we no, we haven't made a video yet. We need to make a video and show you guys how to make that. But the recipe is on the blog. Then this is uh, some lentil stew. This is the hearty lentil stew. And I'm, he, I froze this in the um, one cup size so that I could have it as a side dish to a salad if I wanted to. So I can either pull out two and make it a full meal or I can pull one out as a side dish. And you can fit eight of these in a gallon size bag, which is really nice. Then I just want to show you, oh, this is taco lentils. So I made up taco lentils and then I divided them up in the half cup containers and these are just perfect for tacos for one or tostados or I'll heat this, this up with some grain and use it on top of a chopped salad for a taco salad. So the nice thing about these is you can lay them out and you can stack them. I don't know, is this showing on the, on the camera? I know it's hard to see inside of that. So here it is. This is just a little half cup amount of taco lentils. The recipe is on the blog and this just, it works out great, you guys. I just, I love the convenience of it. I like that everything is in perfect portions and that I don't have to thaw out a great big container when I'm the only one that wants a serving of it. Now this was wild rice. I went ahead and made wild rice, a big batch of it, and I actually froze this in two different sizes because sometimes I want half a cup and sometimes I want a full cup. So here is a full cup and here is a half cup. So works out great. And these thaw out real um, quickly because it's not a big massive chunk of grain and so when you put these in your freezer, you can see that they stack quite nicely. I want to see, can you see that? And they stack up quite nicely. You can either do it flat like this, or you can buy a plastic bin to put in your freezer so that you can stack them up. And if you do that, just on the end of it, just take some masking tape or, um, some freezer tape and put it on the container and write what you have. That way you'll know when you go to the freezer, you can see the list and even the kids can look and see. And that's a, this is another great thing that's great for kids too, because if your kids are involved in sports or extracurricular activities and everybody's eating at different times, then they can go and pull out a serving for just them and heat it up in the microwave. And it just makes life so much easier. So a few other things that I wanted to um, share with you about the super cubes is one, remember that you can bake in them. So if you want to do like um, lentil loaves, we call them, then you can do that right in the, this. You can bake in it and then when they're cool, you can pop them out and you can um, freeze them and you'll have nice little individual servings. Also, the lids are not oven safe, so don't put these in the oven. Everything is dishwasher safe, so you can put the lids and the super cubes right in the dishwasher, and they are not safe for the microwave because they have put in a stainless steel um, rim around these, and that keeps them from collapsing. So when you're going from filling them on your kitchen counter to the freezer to put them in the freezer, they don't collapse on you. So, but because of that, you cannot put these in the microwave. Now we have been using the super cubes for um, just about a year now, and we have not had any problem with staining or any problems with odors in them. So you might, if you, maybe if you use a lot of um, Indian type spices like um, turmeric, the curries, and that kind of thing. I do make soups and different things with those, and I haven't had any issues with any staining or any odors with them. But if you did have an issue with them, there's some things that you can do. So they are 
somewhat stain resistant, but if you do get some discoloration, you can take 3% hydrogen peroxide solution and soak them in that for about 24 hours, then put them in the dishwasher and that should take care of it. If you do somehow develop some kind of odor, you use something that was really heavy and um, seasoned with garlic or onion or something and it does develop an odor, First, make sure that you're putting them through the dishwasher because that high heat should help um, get rid of any odor. I do not put them in my dishwasher. I just hand wash them and I still have not had anything pick up an odor. You could put them in a 350 degree oven for about 30 minutes, just empty, and put them in the oven for about 30 minutes. That should take care of any type of odor that they might have. You could use vinegar and um, baking soda to wash them. So I just recommend that you um, make sure that you label everything because I oftentimes think I'm going to remember what it was, but I can have two different soups that look very similar once they are frozen. So just be um, cautious about that. But they, these have actually revolutionized our freezer system and my batch cooking. So we couldn't be happier with super cubes. If you have them, I'd love for you to comment and let me know how you use them and what you're making and putting in your super cubes. That would be great. The way you can get super cubes is to use our affiliate link directly to super cubes. And when you go to the site for the first time, there will be a pop-up that asks you to subscribe to their newsletter. And once you put your email in there, they will automatically email you a 10% discount coupon code that you can use on your first order. Or you can visit our Amazon store, that's www.amazon.com forward slash shop forward slash nutmeg notebook that takes you to our page. We have super cubes listed there. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel and make sure you click on that bell icon because that's how you get notifications whenever I put up a new video. If you haven't gone over to the blog yet, what are you waiting for? Go over to nutmegnotebook.com and make sure to subscribe because then you'll get our newsletter that we like to send out. You won't miss any of our new recipes. And we have a ton of YouTube videos all about a whole food plant-based lifestyle. We hope that you'll check those out as well. So thank you guys so much for watching today. I'm Tammy and I help you get healthy and stay healthy one meal at a time. See you next time. Bye-bye.